We are coming to you from Sydney and this is a bird's eye view of the magnificent Sydney Harbour and all the delights in the background. You can see the city centre, you can see the iconic Sydney Harbour Bridge and of course in the distance there is the Opera House. Some of the magic scenery right here in Sydney of course. We are here for the eighth stop on the MetLife BWF World Super Series. Yes, and with our next final B men's doubles, chance for us to look at the current destination Dubai uh, rankings. And I can tell you that me and Sai, who are in the men's doubles final, regardless of whether they win or lose, will go up one place. They will overtake the world champions currently at number two. So the pair from Taipei will go up to number two. And as far as the Koreans, uh, Lee and Yu, they too will go in an upward direction. They will go up two places to number three. So it will all be change after this week's Australian Open. And we welcome the players onto court. Williams in the blue shirts. Long day and Yu Young Sung. Well, two Korean pairs in semi-final having had three Korean pairs at the quarter-final stage. And the Malaysians coming through to that semi-final by virtue of the fact that, as I was just alluding to, the world champions and number one seeds here, Hassan and Setiawan, desperately disappointing that they had to withdraw before the tournament, but it did make way for some other pairs to come through to the latter stages. Well, this man, Li Sheng Mu, is a former finalist here at the Australian Open two years ago when it was still a Grand Prix gold event. Of course, now it's a Super Series event. He and Fang Chia Min lost in the final to Marcus Kido and Hendra Seti won. So him, his new partner, Sai Chia Sin, will be hoping to go one better this year. Li Sheng Mu is 27 years of age. His partner is 31, so he'll turn 32 next month. And as you can see, six in the world ranking. They have been as high as five. And their win-loss record for the year, well, they reached the final of the Singapore Super Series event where they lost out to Kai Yun and Liu Kai of China. So this is their second Super Series tournament final of the year. And in the very first round, they got a walkover after, or retirement from the Australian pair after the opening game. Uh, that uh, quarter-final against another Chinese pair, number five seeds, uh, Liu Xiaolong and Chu Sihan. And semi-final, what a great win uh, against the number two seeds, Kim Ki Jung and Kim Sa Rang. So Korea doing very well in this tournament. And talking of Korea doing well, isn't this pair on a roll? The number four seeds have gone up two places in the world ranking this week to number two. And they, of course, have won the last two Super Series tournaments in the last two weeks. I'm not sure I've ever seen a hat-trick of Super Series titles in as many weeks. I'm not sure we've had three Super Series on the bounce like this, but if they were to achieve that, it would be really fairly remarkable. Their win-loss record for the year translating into two titles, as I say, and two quarterfinals. Now, they were pushed in the second round against Hirokatsu Hashimoto and Noriyasu Hirata. And apart from that, has been two straight games. Malaysians in both the quarterfinal and the semi-final. Now, the last time that this Korean pair actually lost was in the Thomas Cup finals in Delhi last month. So they're on a 14-match winning streak when you take into account the matches won here in Sydney. They have met once previously. That was the, the end of last year in the quarter-final stage of that Hong Kong Open. And as you can see, it really was one-way traffic for the pair that I think have even improved since then. Lee Yong Day and Yu Young Sung. 
Grace Chair, our umpire from Singapore, and Wayana from Indonesia. And I'm looking forward to seeing Lee Young Day in action. He has been electric during this right. tournament. Lee Young Day, Liu Yunxiong, Korea. And another man who's looking forward to this doubles encounter, an old doubles player himself. He just loves the doubles format. Mark Nichols. I'm very excited to see the Korean pair. They've been in scintillating form. Let's see if they can continue and win the third title in a row. Now, in my humble opinion, I think that Li Sheng Mu is probably one of the fastest players in world badminton. He really is electric quick coming forward. I'm not sure he always makes the right choice of shots, though, when he does come forward. Is that a fair comment, or am I being a little harsh, as usual? No, I think it's probably fair. It's, you know, it's about making those good decisions. Doubles, you don't have a lot of time to think about it. It's often so about it's instinct and getting Two, that instinct one. and decision making right can make all the difference. Oh, we saw in that rally Li Sheng Mu intercept. He should have kept the pressure on, in my opinion. I know that's easy for me to say, sitting here uh, watching. It's much more difficult on court. But, you know, then all of a sudden, having really piled on the pressure, he lifts the shuttle and lifts out. And that's a perfect example of that wrong decision-making. And the Koreans don't give you a second chance. They're so lethal on anything up in the air. Yeah. When you've got the momentum and you've got control of the rally, you really don't want to give it away. Seems to me as if Sai Chia Sin is a little bit nervous. There he is. All this man on court. Pointing in a downward direction, Two. says our service judge. Oh, very nice to see players for once not going and talking to the service judge. There's a clear indication with a hand or arm signal from the service judge as to why the fault has been called. And I've been having my little gripe as to why Two. players need to go and have it confirmed verbally. There is no need for it. recovery at the early part of that so rally over. you know it's so important Three. as a men's doubles player to always be watching your partner as well if he gets himself into trouble you've got to help him out medalist at the 2010 World Championships, Li Sheng Mu, in the mixed doubles with Qian Yu Chin. So we know he's quick. 
I mean, no, he's world class. So confident, the Koreans, in their defence. They were under so much pressure there. Immediately got the opportunity, turned it over and took the point. Brilliant play. What a good serve. to it with Five, the return nine. but I like the way that he instead of serving to the tee just moved the shuttle across mm. a little bit more aiming towards his opponent's left shoulder <laughs> you know, when we talk about variation of serve everybody just thinks it's either a low serve or a flick serve and I like to see the variation on the placement of the low serve yeah, most top doubles players will have three or four positions they like to serve on, a, as part of that low service action. You know, rarely you see the ones right out wide, but more serving straight at the opposition player or down the tee. So that's gone long, and it means that we're already at the mid-game interval, 11-5, and we've only had five minutes of action. It's all happening in double quick time. We thought they were impressive yesterday when they played against the Malaysians, Hun Tian Hao and Tan Bu Hyong from the World Junior Champions. I think they're looking even more impressive today. Yeah, they really haven't made any mistakes at all. Been forcing errors from their opposing team. And this man is very impressive. Lee Young Day. Human after all, the young day making an error on the backhand there. But what a good rally! Mm. And that's what you like to see. You like to see the change in pace, control, as well as all out aggression. Smash from the young son. So Chia Sin really does wait committed to his backhand defence. They're just hitting it down his forehand side. Uh, that was a wonderful example of the athletic ability of both the Korean players. Spot by the umpire. Koreans in the wrong formation. There's that defence again. He's he's trying to defend backhand, but it's going towards his his slightly forehand side. It's getting himself in a tangle. Good accuracy again from you. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, what a Brilliant. shot. <laughs> Absolutely magnificent play from Lee on day. The drive defence. And then stepping into the next one, guiding it into the open space. Again, showing that great defence early in that rally. His ability to just push the shuttle back over off a full-blooded smash from the opposition really turned the table in that rally. The young day. Yeah. Yeah. He just has that ability to change the direction on the defence, whether it be on the backhand or the off-backhand side. It's incredible skill. Backhand from Mishin Mu. So it's over 8.15. And a pair from Taipei. Need a little run of points right now. <laughs> oh, yes, that's well taken. He doesn't want to change the shuttle. The Koreans had asked him to do so. So it's over 16-9. Well, if they were really concerned about the shuttle, I think the Koreans would ask now to change the shuttle. <laughs> Good return. Very good return. Really so well over. disguised on that and occasion. 16. All about getting the racket there early, having options. Absolutely phenomenal. Virtually got his back to the net as he played that cross court. Just acutely aware of where his opponent's positioning was on court, where the gap was. Turn. Service over. 11 17. Attack from Lee Yong Day, the smash down the centre of the court. And this is the new dimension to this new Korean pair. Yu Young Sung has the ability to really finish off the rally. Of course, Lee Yong Day's former partner, Go Sung Hyung, we saw in the first of our finals today. And whilst he's physically very strong, he doesn't have that killer instinct at the net. Well taken. So it's over. 12, 18.
did all the hard work. Stanislava, 19-12. Oh, we're talking about it in the women's doubles, about a big swing at the net. Just need to get your racket up ready and a short, sharp movement of that racket head will suffice. Nineteen twelve. Twenty. Mm, the luck of the net call with Lee Yong Day. And that good fortune and brings up game point opportunities. Long. Oh, I think Yu Young Sung was off court, about to pick up his racket bag. <laughs> I think it was a correct call. I think it did just drive it wide and drive it out the back of the court. Yep. Oh. Mm. All set up with a good low serve from Yu Xing Mu. 14-20. So effective coming Cosby, forward. So the opening game, 21-14 in just 16 minutes of play. form indeed. Lee Yong Day sees his whereabouts suspension and that being lifted. And he seems to come back with a new determination. Yes, body language between the two is still very positive. That's good to see. Hey, coach, using all of his allotted time. We are coming to you from the State Sports Centre at Homebush here in Sydney, one of the magnif magnificent stadiums in and around the Harbour City. Of course, it's all set up with accommodation. There's also residential areas, but prime, prime, sports arenas and facilities and it is now the sydney olympic park here are the highlights of the first game in the men's doubles final on the no. first point of the second game. Strike above the waist. Oh, oh dear me. Well, service, service fault, followed by a service One. error. Oh. Not the start that either pair would have wanted. Well, thinking back to that quarter-final in Hong Kong at the end of last year when the, these two pairs met, the only previous occasion they met. Opening game score, 21-14. Opening game score here, 21-14. 21-10 in the second game in Hong Kong. I wonder what the odds are. They're not exactly the same <laughs> scoreline. Couldn't happen no. twice, could it? Oh. What I did notice in the first game was how often the Korean
pair when they're returning serve were just touching the shuttle back over the net. And the Chinese Taipei pair were often just lifting straight up. It'll be interesting to see whether they continue to do that in this second game. They do a really good serve and then allow their opponents to just touch the shuttle back over the net and then lose the ascendancy straight away. Well, if there's one area the Koreans can improve, it's that defence there. They're so far back in court. Shuttles landed in front of them before they can even get to a racket to it. So if you've got to move your base position, your defensive stance, further forward in court. Otherwise, you've got no hope. Sometimes that can be a difficult mental thing to overcome. The shorter your lift is, the closer you need to be to where the shuttle's coming from. Yeah, natural instinct is to run away. <laughs> Absolutely. Is being called. Yep, double hit. Good spot by the umpire. I wonder if the pair from Chinese Taipei should try a few blocks on the defence. We've either seen lifts or we've seen drives. We haven't seen any block and move forward. I guess it's a bit difficult against the Koreans because both the Korean players are so sharp coming yeah. forward Absolutely. and that's maybe why they haven't tried it. But quite frankly, if they just continue in this vein, they're going to lose anyway. Yep. You might as well tr try something different. And that's part of the natural variation of the game that you have to have. You can't just drive the shuttle back so quick Seven, absolutely four. relentless at the front court yeah you, know, you see that's the sort of block that I haven't really seen from the Taipei pair, we saw it from the Koreans, and again. That's better. First time they blocked. <laughs> and they did it three times in the rally. Exactly what you were talking about. It creates the indecision. Really puts the pressure on the opposition. Serving Five. from the Taipei pair really has been a little off today. Cannot afford that in doubles. Go oh, my goodness <laughs> me. Well, whatever it is, it's catching. Six, 
from arguably the best doubles player in the world. Yep. No, I talked yesterday about my theory on why he's lost the rhythm on, on that low serve because of his mixed doubles and his different positioning. Mm -hmm. Required for you, young son. Yeah, a little scratch of the head from Li Sheng Mu. What are we to do here? single block from no. the Taipei pair. Ten, six. And that makes it very easy for the Korean pair to just rotate around at the back court. They're not too worried about having to rush forward and take the shuttle at the front. It just allows them to put all their awareness into how they rotate the workload at the back. Defensive play, but I suppose first and foremost, they're from Taipei, need to get on the attack. Yeah, they certainly need to be able to turn as many of those opportunities from defence to attack. The Koreans will be very comfortable if they're doing all the attacking. Yeah, and that's my point because I think the pair from Taipei need to, right from the onset of the rally, need to be on the attack. You see? In, instead of attacking the third shot, there's mm. the lift. I reckon they did that probably 50% of the time in the first set. Just push the shuttle back over. You often find by not putting pressure on that third shot, it takes a lot of the pressure off the person returning the serve. They, they're quite yeah, comfortable. They're exactly. not even worried about it. Yeah. Well, good play from the front of the court once again by the Koreans. And it means that they have a three-point advantage now here in the second game. Well, the Taipei coach is certainly saying something about front of the court there, pressurising, whether he's talking about that's what they should do, or whether he's talking about being wary of your opponents being there. No, yeah, Korean coach doesn't need much time. Keep doing the same thing, lads. Oh, 
always missed it. Too casual by half. Sachi has sent. Oh, good return. <laughs> Almost a trick shot there. Nine, 12. Good follow up attacking position. Don't they look different when they themselves are hitting the shuttle in a downward direction? Totally different prospect. Oh. That's a clever smash. Getting the new young son in a bit of a tangle there on his defence. There is no challenge on the centre line, I don't think, lads. Oh, well, I thought they were challenging on the centre line. Let's have a look at that. Well, how on earth was that called out by the front service line judge? Beyond me, I don't understand what happened oh, I there. Don't, uh, this, this, that's just well, beyond comprehension. And we could see the lines judge down the centre line calling it out or calling it in. Yeah, and and therefore the call. I could see the umpire Grace Cheer mm. uh, pointed to the front service line judge. And he called it out. Well, that was in by a country mile. <laughs> on every single line, we do, don't, don't we? we? <laughs> that will come, don't worry. <laughs> it wide. Defence, the Chinese Thai play pair in that rally played two blocks back to the net. I can't help but think that's a really important part of how they're going to get themselves back into this match. Only two points adrift now. Mm, is taking quite a bit of time. just have that ability to rush their op opponents often when it gets tight. They, they just put that 
add a little pressure, a bit of pressure on. They put the pedal to the metal and... Good serve. as it landed, having said delightful, whether in fact it did catch the line and the Koreans have said we want to challenge that. It was called goods, they think it was out and I have to say I had second thoughts myself. Right on the outside edge of the line. Critical point. Yeah. Beautiful variation in the attack there. Changing direction, 16. taking the pace off. So only just one point in it. decisions. On the back level. I think I've seen the first little sign that perhaps you young Sung especially tends to be the workhorse in the Korean partnership. I think the signs that he's a little bit fatigued. And that would be perfectly understandable. Good smash from his partner Lee Yong Day though. Across the body. I think he broke a string on that last smash too. Interesting formation in the return side for the Chinese Taipei. When we see them come back on the court, let's have a look how they set up both on the same side. Yeah, that is intimidation if ever I've seen it. <laughs> play from on the floor.
I think his partner just lifted it a little bit higher than he normally would to give him a bit more time to get up. Oh, the umpire urging the players to keep this moving along. Been on court just a fraction under 40 minutes. away from yet another title. Koreans miss their sixth final. Five previous, they've never lost. <laughs> and we really are at now or never as far as the pair from Taipei are concerned. serve here. Sai Chia Sin. Well, I know it was a lucky net cord from uh, Lee Yong Day, but I can't help but question in my own mind that lift from Lee Sheng Mu. After a good serve, why aren't you putting the pressure on your opponents? Because now, as far as the Koreans are concerned, they have three match point opportunities for a third title in three weeks. Fortune favours the brave. You're down match point. Maybe you just think there's nothing left to lose. We've got to go for it. Still match point for the Koreans. Super Series title in three weeks. That is phenomenal. What a series of tournaments. And for them to keep this level throughout all three has been astonishing. 21-14, 21-18 in 43 minutes. And yet another title for the Korean men's doubles pair. Lee Yong Day and Yu Young Sun. For Lee Yong Day, this is his 55th title, his 33rd Super Series title. They're going to throw rackets to fans. Well, simply astonishing the level of that play that they have maintained throughout the three weeks.
elation from our winners. Unbelievable. Yeah, what a fantastic performance throughout the three weeks. Have to say, looking at that, disappointing that our four finals so far have been done and dusted in two straight games. There's been some great matches, I have to say, some wonderful badminton. But I wonder whether our last match, men's singles, Linda and the reigning world and Olympic champion against the former world number three, Simon Santosa, whether that will go the full distance. Let's go down to the presentation area. Men's doubles. Good to do the men's Day doubles player presentation career in the doubles, and having won the Mr. mixed Paul doubles, Satio, and now the men's the CEO doubles. of Crown Group, accompanied by Mr. Tony Antonius, the CEO of BHM Oil and Gas. Also, Sandra Chipchase, CEO of Destination New South Wales. Silver medalists first. Runners up. Li Cheng Mu and Sai Chia Sin, Chinese Taipei. Beating 21 14, 21 18 in 43 minutes. And now gold. To and our champions who Day, a new have Xiong been in sensational Korea. form, as Jill mentioned, their third Super Series title in as many weeks. Tony Antonius to present the checks to the runners up, please. Course. This is the men's doubles presentation at the Star Australian Runner Badminton Lee Open Sheng for 2014. 28.500 to the runners up, almost 60,000 US to the winners. And more importantly, Jill, maybe a piece of history with three consecutive Super Series wins. Yeah, I'm trying to rack my brains as to whether this is the first time ever. I'm not sure that it is. But it's certainly the first time we've had three Super Series events back to back, so. Well, there's the perpetual trophy for the men's doubles champions. Who will be the Australian Open men's singles champion? We will find out next.
If you weren't at the star, Australian badminton open like we are, well, why wouldn't you be on Sydney Harbour? We are coming to you live from Sydney and the Harbour City looking absolutely magnificent and hopping on a ferry, heading down to Manly. Fish and chips uh, down there would be just fantastic. But we have men's singles final coming up. Yes, and looking at the Super Series rankings at the moment, well, there'll be no change in the top four. Of course, none of the top four players here in Sydney. There will be a change, though, with Hans Gritting Fittinghus, who lost the first round here. He will swap places with the current uh, number six, Sun Ho. And our two finalists make their way out onto court. Lin Dan leads out the two combatants and his opponent will be Simon Santoso. Well, the semi-finals yesterday, we had an all-Chinese affair and an all-Indonesian affair. And I have to say, the pick of the two was the all-Indonesian affair. Far more intensity to that, but I have to say, I'm looking forward to this final because Lindan, of course, is the reigning world and Olympic champion. This, Your incredibly, choice. is only his fifth individual tournament since Service? winning Olympic gold in London 2012. For Simon Santoso, well, he's a former world number three, so we know he's a very good player. We saw that earlier this year where he won the Singapore Super Series title, having battled his way through the qualifying. And that, in fact, was his second title back-to-back, -back, having won the Malaysian Grand Prix gold as well. But so many fans around the world have been so longing to see the return of this man. Twice Olympic champion, five times world champion. But from the form I saw yesterday in his semi-final, a not returned to the sort of form that took him to those gold medals. So to his opponent, well, Simon Santoso, 28 years of age, so he'll turn 29 next month from Tegel in central Drava. He is steadily making his way up the world ranking, up nine places this last week, up to 18, and that's because he's been out injured. But as you can see from his win-loss record for the year, he's been in great form. Two titles, as I say, back to back. And when you look at his previous matches so far, all in straight games, including that semi-final against the number three seed, his teammate, Tommy Sugiato. So to the reigning world and Olympic champion, 30-year-old Lindan from Fuzhou in Fujian province. World ranking of 22 actually went down one place this week, but of course he was world number one for over four years. His win-loss record for the year, well, he lost in the quarter-final of the Japan Super Series as a qualifier. And the Japan event two weeks ago was his first Super Series event since the 2012 All England Championships, which he won 27 months ago. Well, when you look at those previous results so far in this tournament, quarter-final against the number four seed, Song Wan Ho of Korea, and that semi-final against the defending champion, last year's winner, Tian Hao Wei. Well, this will be the 12th meeting between the two, and if you're an Indonesian fan, that statistic will look a little ominous. Simon Santoso, you have to go back to 2007 and the semi-final of the Swiss Super Series event. The Swiss used to be a Super Series until it was replaced by India and now of course we've got the delight of the Super Series spreading even further here to the Australian Open. Players ready? Chris up from New Zealand. with all the officials for all quarterfinals onwards, I believe. It 
Lynn Dan has been very popular with fans of the sport since arriving in Australia. Had a promotional visit down to Darling Harbour and he was actually mobbed by fans.